They're pretty tame, they want food. This is my horse that I ride. What's up, bud? This is Czar. Those horses are, that that one's, all those light ones are super tame. Czar. That one over there, I don't know. This is the one I raised right here. This is a female, she's two. One of those with the white mares just came right up to me when I first yeah. came in and it's like I was petting it. It's Czar. They want food. Horses, you have to give some grain usually. They have stomach kind of where they can eat it. Hey girl. Yeah, I have the bigger horses down south at my other farm. I'll bring the big ones. The oh. first podcast in my one of my barns. <laughs> A land Got podcast. Hay, straw, wheat. There you go. Okay. This is an interesting episode. We're on my farm and I was like, let's shoot in the barn. So you got the straw here, you got hay here, wheat, but it's appropriate because we're talking about land. So John, we've started to partner up buying land. We just closed our first deal in Texas. Uh, and so I was like, let's, let's let the world hear what you're doing because a lot of people have been fascinated by this land arbitrage concept. So yeah. where are you from originally? I'm from Michigan. From Michigan. I've been in Texas for the last 11 years. Yeah. It's like a second home. So you're 29 years old. Yes. And you already have more than 10 million in real estate deals that you've done. Yeah, I'd call it about 10 million. 10 yeah. mil. You've got positive cash flow from the deals. Yep. Have any of the deals, have every one been profitable so far? Everyone has been profitable. There's been like, I think two times when I first started off where I bought a piece of land where it was like, bad title or something wrong, but. Right, you but know, you got to fix pieces. now? Yeah. How many deals have you done total? Over 500. Uh, last recent count was about 525-ish. Yeah. So let's talk big picture. Listen to this episode if you are someone who realizes, you know, the most millionaires in the world have been made from real estate. Not billionaires. Most billionaires came from people who built and owned, you know, brands. But millionaires come from everyday ordinary people who buy up real estate and know how to do it. It's something they don't teach you in school at all, which is pretty insane. 250 trillion of estimated global net worth is in real estate, whether it's commercial, raw land. We're going to talk today more about raw land, farmland, a little bit like that, you know, but all the different classes of estate: commercial, residential, multifamily, you know, single family homes blah, blah, blah. You have every taking land and doing development. And the thing I remember when I, I remember, you know how I first started getting into real estate? How's that? <laughs> this is funny. I know you're not, I'm gonna make you interview me. I'm okay. Gonna... <laughs> I got some questions. Um, I saw a late night commercial. So I had started a business financial, uh, kind of financial planning company. I was a CFP. And I saw this just random commercial, Carlton Sheets. Have you ever heard of this guy? I have. I He's like have. old school. It's like a rerun yeah. of an infomercial. And he had all these people that he was showing had created wealth with real estate using his system. He had this system. I forget what it was, but I, maybe single family homes or something renting them out. So I'm watching it and I'm like, huh, this seems weird. I was with, the, I remember with this guy named Navon. He was a roommate. This is the first time I started making even a little bit of money. I went from sleeping in a mobile home to this house and they had a TV when I first moved in with two roommates. Anyway, the next week I had a um, financial planning like meetup with a potential client. I remember his, his first name was Scott. I remember he was, this is when I was in North Carolina. I go to Greensboro, I meet him, him and his wife and he, and he's like, here's my tax returns. I'm making millions of dollars. I was a car salesman. Now I got into real estate. I'm making, it was the first time I'd seen a tax return where a guy was making millions. And I was like, wow. So here's the crazy thing. I was thinking to myself, I just saw this infomercial on real estate. I drive back home from meeting this Scott guy in Greensboro. And I'm watching and this Carlton Sheets thing would come on at midnight. It was like a late night, inf late night infomercial. And it was the client I had just met with, with Carlton Sheets in Hawaii, being like, and Scott is one of my top 
Thanks. students and testimonial. And now's when I knew this infomercial is not BS. Cause I called Scott the next day. I was like, I saw you on TV. He's like, yeah, I actually learned my system from a late night infomercial. He's like, I tweaked it myself. And that's when I knew, by the way, this is actually for people who follow me are like, why are you into courses? That was the first time I really saw some dude buying a quote unquote, get rich quick course. Cause a lot of people made fun of Carlton Sheets. Like, oh, he's teaching you like, it's a gimmick. Why do you have to pay? So I bought the Carlton Sheets thing. I remember it was $400 and I was like, that is so much money. And that I bought it cheap. and then I started, yeah. I mean, so let's switch over to you. That's kind of my story of like courses and how I got started. And I started buying some houses in Raleigh, North Carolina. And then I progressed. Now I buy land. That's how we kind of hooked, you know, kind of partnered up on these first deals we're doing together. But for you, what is the backstory? Like, mm -hmm. were you completely broke at some point? I, I can never say I had a broke to riches story. Okay. Um, I was an engineer. That's what I went to school okay. for. Texas Tech, graduated petroleum engineering. And I guess I had that point where I was like, man, I'd like this, but I hate going to the office. Right. I just freaking hated like coming in. It was like, it wasn't even nine to five. It was like seven to five, like these grueling hours plus late night calls. Cause I was like doing drilling rigs and everything. I was like, man, there's gotta be another way to make money and like, okay. you know, get some freedom. And so I found out about this land business model actually on a podcast and some somebody dude, else's podcast. somebody else's podcast okay. they were pitching their course and you know whatever talking about land and i was like okay i've always been interested in like flipping stuff mm -hmm. whether it be like garage selling or concert tickets whatever like hustling i was like maybe i can just do that with real estate and with land it seems easy enough so i bought how that, old were you at this uh 23 23 okay yeah so i bought that dude's course it would have been november of 2016 and I bought another course. So I took two courses. How much were they? You remember? They're both, one was a thousand, one was 1500. Oh, one of them, expensive. Okay. one of them came with a free piece of land. Really? Yeah. They're like, buy the course for 1500, you get a free piece of land. Where was the land? Like, like in was, the Sahara desert? <laughs> like, it was in the, the desert moon? of, desert of Arizona. It was like a one acre piece out in Arizona. <laughs> in the probably desert. worth like 150 bucks. Well, funny enough, I ended up selling that for 125 a month for 12 months. So $1,500. And I got the course basically for free. Oh, you got your money. So you, sold it with financing mm -hmm. yeah seller financing just on a land contract so you made your so the course ended up being free yeah okay that's cool yeah so i took those two courses it was november of 2016 i was like man i just want to find a deal and start small and kind of jump in okay and that's when i found my first deal in texas it was 53 acres for 8500 bucks an acre or total total 170 oh, per acre <laughs> 170 <laughs> so what why was it so cheap what was wrong with it well, it was kind of in the middle of nowhere of West Texas. Again, the desert, no yeah. water, you know, no real road access. It was just desert yep. mesquite land. And I was like, you know, I was looking, I was like, everything else around here is selling for like 12, 1300. This dude was asking like 10 grand. I was like, I'm gonna try and get it down like 8,500. Okay. So I'm like in my office working engineering, like haggling with this dude on the phone while I should be working. And we ended up settling on 8,500 bucks. Okay. And that was the first deal. I ended up selling it off in five different pieces of like 10 acres. And so how much would you make? You put in how much? 8,000? 8,500. And how much you, how much do you make back from that overall? I pretty much doubled my money. I sold a few of them off on owner financing again, and a couple of them for cash I ended up with like 17 or 18 grand. Total and then you took that, that and you, did you keep snowballing it into bigger? Yes. Well, thankfully as an engineer, you make a lot of money. So yeah. I literally just took all that money plus the success from that first deal and just plowed it into more deals like yeah. that. So that was the start of it, like starting with those small pieces in the middle of nowhere, kind of more just like flipping. Right. So that was the beginning of an empire. Mm -hmm. Beginning of an empire. So, okay. Now, let's fast forward now. You've done over 500 deals. If somebody's watching, like what's the top three tips for someone to get started? Yeah. Is it as simple? Because you'll see people like, you know, I've been doing education stuff around business and entrepreneurship. And some people's like, just do it. But then people are like, I don't know what to just do. Like, let's say you lost everything you had. You had to start all over today. What size piece of land are you going for? What area are you looking at? What price per acre would you say? I mean, obviously yeah. that's variable. Like we're here on the East Coast land. You can't buy any land here for 170 bucks an acre. No. Um, most of the land here is eight to 12,000 and land's going up now because there's 
people worried about the future of the world and food and all that. So farmland's been going up. But how would you, what would be just like, you know, the three simplest ways you get started? Would you find five yeah. acres, yeah, you, divide it up? You, you got to start small for sure. So I would say five to 10 grand, even when I go to work a new area, like yep. we're talking about doing deals in Virginia or whatever now, like I want to start small. Yeah. Like I don't want to just go in for like a $500,000 million deal. You know, you got to start, you know, five figures under 10 grand if you can. So yeah. you got to start small. But the thing is, is you got to get super familiar with an area because yeah. like the more knowledge you have on that area, the more arbitrage there is because boom, you instantly right. see a deal and you know it's a deal and you know exactly, okay, I buy right. this for five, it's instantly worth 10. So gotcha. if I were to come work Virginia now, like I would just laser focus, find out, you know, what stuff is selling for here, what the county regulations are, um, you know, the realtors, brokers in the area, who else is working the area, just pick a county because, mm -hmm. you know, land ownership. So you think this will work in basically anywhere? Oh yeah, it works anywhere. I mean, I have people who I teach and know and stuff. They're, I have a guy who's doing it in Virginia, yeah. um, one acre lots. What about somewhere in a place like Alaska? Would this work? Florida? Yeah. What about outside the U.S.? You know, obviously there's different regulations, but mm -hmm. the land arbitrage system, if you don't know what arbitrage is, it's you take something that's worth this and somebody pays you this <laughs> you, and yeah. you do it relatively quickly. So we just did a deal together, 100, 160 acres. Yes, sir. And we already had three of the lots sold when we closed and bought the land. So we already had money coming in yeah. literally in the first millisecond of ownership, which is pretty cool. And then we've sold now, it's only been two weeks. Two weeks we've already got half of it sold. Half of it sold off. So start super small. It's kind of like they say, know your customer, you know, know your, know your county. county in yeah. this case, because land ownership is controlled by the county tax yep. records. Now, number two, what do people need to know about? Like, I don't have, if let's say somebody says, I have no money. How do I do this? What are the, what's the basics you would teach them about the financing side? How you get the, in general, getting the owner themselves to finance. Yeah. So there's if, if you don't know, by the way, what we're talking about, owner seller finance basically means instead of you having to get a bank loan or pay cash for the property, you get the person selling the property to write up a note that an IOU that you owe them payments. So if you maybe don't have good credit, that's good. And their security, if you don't pay them back in general, depending on the state, is they own the land, they can take it back from you. So that's you might think that's scary, but in a sense, that's good yeah. because if you don't have great credit or you don't have a track record in general, a bank, especially for raw land, banks are not going to find it. They're not very it. friendly. No. no. If you have a great, if you're a billionaire or a millionaire and you have a great track record, you could convince them. Even then, you're going to have to put quite a bit down on 20% raw land. 20% at, yeah. is like the lowest. The lowest. But a lot of 30. banks are going to want 50 if you yeah. have no track record and it's a raw piece of land. So- how do you get and find people who own land that are willing to sell it to you and take payments on it? Yeah, so one thing I've kind of started doing at scale and it's unlocked a tremendous amount of wealth is the seller financing. And I think I'm the only person I know who's actually sending out an offer letter okay. for seller financing. So I will send right. them a hard offer, two page offer letter that I have offering to buy their land on financing, yes. I was explicitly saying there, this is how much I'm gonna give you down. Yes. And then how much I'm gonna give you per month at what percentage interest over whatever rate. Mm -hmm. And what we do is there's two main ways we can do it. We can just pull the data from the county right. and we put it in a spreadsheet and mail them out. Or what I love to do is I actually hard manual labor or hire someone else to do it, go into the county GIS mapping system okay, and start looking at these pieces of land on basically Google Earth and scraping them manually into mm -hmm. a spreadsheet. And so I'll go into whatever county, whatever area interests me, and I'll pull up their GIS map and start clicking on pieces of land that don't have anything on them or don't look like they have anything on them. And I transfer their ownership data, their location, I put it in a spreadsheet and I will individually apply each piece of land with a value that I think it's worth. Okay. trying to offer like 70 cents on the dollar, mm -hmm. basically. With that way you're financing. instantly in the money. Instantly buying it undervalued. So it's, math, it's mass messaging a whole bunch of people in a county with yep. a letter, like snail mail, old school. 
yes. in the in, in their mailbox. There's still people that use the mail, not many, but and they get the letter and it's well written out and it's two pages and it actually has an offer. Like, it has an offer, yeah. And so what you're looking for is what they call in the industry motivated sellers. Yeah. Meaning they got something else going on. Yes, they maybe could sell the piece of land for fifty thousand dollars. If they had a year, because land in general sells sl much slower than homes. Yes. In this area. If it's a big piece, especially. Yeah, on the East Coast, there's a lot of, the average big farm takes three to five years to sell. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, but, I was in Europe, in Sweden, the average big farm will sell in three to five weeks. It's insane. So it depends what country you're, li you know, you're in, in, in the state. But so you're looking for a motivated seller who basically goes, I don't want to have my house on the market. And here's this letter from John. And yeah. like, I can have money right now. That's pretty tempting to people. And it's pretty crazy. The response rate is I've seen like 1%, which is actually yeah. pretty insane. Cause you know, you mail out three or 500 of these things yes. and you got three or five acceptances Yes, for big pieces. Like these are not small pieces. So like how yes. much capital do you have? And can you actually, and you can mail them? three to 500 people is not the cost of marketing. It's like yeah. the cheaper than Facebook Couple ads. hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, and so you generate. So basically, you got to know the letter. It needs to. You have to know how to compile. The important thing for somebody listening or watching is you have to know how to compile the offer so you don't over offer. Yeah, you don't want to over offer. Because if it's, it's worth, it might be worth a thousand bucks an acre, and you offer like, oh, I'm prepared to give you fifteen hundred bucks an acre, and they're like, sure, and then. You buy the property and then you're like, but, wait a second. But here's the thing, you have to make your offer competitive, right? Because no one in their right mind is gonna sell their million dollar ranch for four or 500,000. Yes. It needs to be, you know, 70, 80 cents yes. on the dollar. So boom, you're buying it undervalued. Then if you wanna subdivide it yep. or develop it, do whatever, you're adding value from there. Exactly. So it's not just complete arbitraging by undercutting people. It's like we actually, and the, the deal, we're doing deals together, that deal we're coming in there and making sure there's water and making sure that there's the ability because on a big piece of property, most people can't handle a big piece of property. Yeah. So you're doing a service to say, all right, here's 20 acres of it. And we're also providing that seller with a pretty good tax advantage too, right? He's getting to pay yes. tax over time. He's getting monthly cash flow. He's not yes. hit with like some tax burden on a sale of his yep. land. Yeah, because some, a lot of people, especially people who are older who've owned farms and they inherited them, their tax basis is super low. So when they sell this yeah. thing, maybe they've been sitting on the piece of land for 50 years. When they sell it, they might have a crazy amount of capital gains. And in every country in the world, the government wants their piece. So that's the third part is you write the letter and then you negotiate a deal where you just pay them off monthly for the land. And then the arbitrage, by the way, and we'll get to that in a second, the arbitrage is where you then take that land, flip it, and have somebody else pay you more payments than you're paying them and you keep the difference and yeah. you own the land. And one thing we talk about letters, one thing I actually want to mention too, is there's so many of these big pieces just sitting online Yeah. and they're illiquid. Some of my biggest projects I've actually found online because they're just listed on, you know, land websites yes. like Lands of America because there's just, the realtors suck at selling it. They're unmotivated. Yep. The listing sucks. You know, there was one piece I bought. It was like, Two hundred thousand dollars, and it's like one iPhone picture, and the dude's thumbs like covering the camera. I'm like, you're <laughs> gonna sell marketing. a piece of yeah. land and not even have like drone photos or anything. So there's actually just so much land just out there right now, just online, where there's just like so much opportunity to buy it at a great price because it's a liquid. These larger pieces, yes, a lot of people can't afford them. Yeah, yeah. So you're really, I mean, here's the thing I tell people about business: everybody assumes that there's a lot of hardworking people who are working smart and people go, oh, I don't want to buy land because, you know, all the good pieces are taken. What you learned in your 20s was like, if you get out there and start taking action, learn from somebody, like I said, you bought a couple courses, learn from somebody. And then, of course, you eventually start learning from experience, but you get started off somebody's system. And then you kind of tweak it over time. Like there's not a lot of people doing this. There's no one. And I've tweaked it to the point where I don't know there's anyone doing this arbitrage where you buy it on seller finance yeah. and then sell it on seller finance. I'm so, the only person I know that's And think really of good. this. There's over 300 million Americans. Yeah. And there's one 29-year-old doing it. It's like, we, that just shows you like people are getting lazier, man. We got to make land ownership simple. That's what's so beautiful about buying, selling it with owner financing, yes. collecting payments from people because they can... 
They don't need to use a bank. They it's actually give affordable loan. what we're doing. Like the deal yeah. we're doing actually provides- 700 a, a month. Yeah, affordable housing for people. Yeah. So it's actually good for the world too. It's not like you're just making money by doing something completely exploitative and destructive. It's like, no, we're like actually taking land that's underutilized. The seller's happy because they make money. The people we resell it to come in and they're happy because they have an affordable place and they didn't need to get a bank loan. So just to make it clear one more time, imagine this is a piece of land right here. Here's a piece of land. It's not on, it's not for sale. The owner of this, let's say, is this water bottle, Mr. Water Bottle. You like these high tech, we're on a farm, man. This is, we're gonna use what we have, not have a high tech diagram like they have on YouTube. So this owner right here, he doesn't even have this necessarily for sale, this piece of land. Let's say it's 20 acres. You send letters to hundreds of people like this. A few of them reply. Out of 300 letters, you get three replies. This guy replies back, sure, I'll sell to you. You come in, you make an offer, you put a little bit of money down. We didn't put much money down on, on 10 the deal. 10 to 15%. Yeah. You put a little bit down, and then we pay this person monthly for five to 10 years. Now, at the same time, you go out, now you own this piece of land, you can divide it up, let's say into four pieces, five acres, five acres, five acres, five acres. And now we'll talk about how you find buyers. Now, this person walks off with their money, and now I'm gonna use this headset, rep you're rep now you <laughs> okay. own this. I'm a headset. John the headset now owns this. He goes out, divides it in four, or divides it in 10, whatever, and then he sells that to individuals, but they don't have to have a bank loan. They give you a little money down and they make monthly payments. So John here has to make his monthly payments to this old owner, but he's getting all this income in from the current people. And the arbitrage is you resell the land for more than you paid this person. Usually, I like to look for it, by the way, at least double. Yeah, so you, you double double your you're money. You're getting 10,000 coming in, you're paying him five, like that's yeah. bare minimum. Like So yeah, imagine here. like you, exactly, you have to pay this guy 5,000 a month for seven years or 10 years, but these people here are paying you 10,000. So basically, think about this is what's mind blowing, what people don't realize. You get to take, and that's, let's say 12,000, let's just do it. So let's say this person, you have to send a check for 6,000. These people are paying you 12, so you get to keep six. Mm -hmm. So you take six off the table into your own pocket, and the other six is from these people who are buying the land for you. That's what people don't realize yeah. about real estate. These other people, because at the end of the day, you know, they're paying off the note for you. Now, of course, you transfer the ownership to these people, but the point is you still own the land. That's the key thing. And we'll transfer ownership, then we'll go find another deal. You know, there's yes. so much land. And, there. and there are so many variations of these because some of this is by state. So you could do the notes, for example, where instantly you transfer title to these people. You can also, some states, you would not transfer it till the end of the note payment. Also, you could give people, and this happens sometimes, some people will say, I'll just give you cash for it. Yeah, great. Yeah make more money quicker. So yeah, it depends on the state you're in, in, in certain states, like I said. Also, there's other ways to make money. There are companies out there, you could take this note that you have from these four people, you could resell it to someone else, okay? And they give you a instant check for the whole thing. So maybe you paid 100,000, you might get a check for $180,000, literally a couple months later. Yeah, or a couple of weeks. A couple depends, weeks later. That's how quick you want to do it. Yeah. So there's all kinds of, with real estate, there's many, you know, before crypto, before all this stuff, there was real estate. And that's how people were doing stuff. Before the stock market, people flipping stocks, we got the wind coming in. This barn here got years ago, tornado came through and blew it away. It's a cool barn. This like, has to be the first be... podcast recorded in a barn. That's right. On the land. <laughs> I've got, I've got... I have another barn over there we could do. I'm gonna move it around. This one's cool though. I've got, we actually have pigs underneath right now, horses underneath, cows, donkeys. So it's good. There's so much, I mean, the cool thing about this opportunity, there's insanity 
land in this world. There is. I mean, there's so much land. You start flying over the earth and you're like, whoa. And remember, land also changes hand. I guarantee you there's going to be a piece of property that you bought, sold. One day you might come back and buy it again. I have done that. You've done that. I've, they're like, I don't want it anymore. I'm yes. like, well, I'm not going to buy it back for what I sold it to you for. Yes. But I'll buy it back at like 50, 60%. <laughs> so you make money again. Yeah. And I sell it again. So land is like, land is, is very much, I mean, I like the land from like, the, I have organic farms. I like rejuvenating the land. You know, I, I wouldn't want all of the farmland in the world to be subdivided. But at the same time, there's some land that is not that good farmland and humans need a place to live. Mm-hmm. So you you buy that land. I'm more interested in that land. I wouldn't want to go into like prime farmland yeah. that's feeding the planet and cut it up for apartments. But there's also other things you can do. Like re- I was looking at some prime farmland in Illinois. You could buy the farmland and just sell off the road frontage. The farm, if you're growing corn, cows, crops for food, they don't care if they have road frontage, right? Nope. So you could sell off the front and then you could keep the back part in organic agriculture or in in woods and forest if you want to you know have trees and you want to do something that's good for the environment so this way can actually fit in with ecological sustainability at the same time also create financial independence for the person who knows how to do it for sure so question for you you went to college you got an engineering degree don't you think they should have you know that most people have a minor (laughs) And people will always pick like a BS minor. It's like, yo, I got an engineering degree. I'm like a art history. Not that yeah. art history is not a good thing to learn, but I mean, you can also learn art history by like making money and traveling the world. Go to the Nile, see, you know, Egypt, go to Paris. So wouldn't it be cool if there was like a minor in money practical? Money. Yeah, or like land, land arbitrage would be yeah. cool. Well, I'm, I'm blessed because from engineering and some of the stuff I've taken, like I got familiar with like economics and spreadsheets and yes. all that stuff. If there's one thing I wish that there was a minor they taught you in college is like a minor in like numbers or like economics or like business, yes. but more just like applied, a, applied finance. Like what I have yes. on my phone is like a yield calculator or like an interest calculator, yes. like just messing around with like a simple interest calculator, you know, like payments, yeah. how much am I getting? How much am I spending? Like, Keep it, and it can be simple. Stuff. Yeah, they have you do calculus, which is fine. Some people need to learn calculus. If you, you know, some people need advanced stuff. But the average person, you don't have to be somebody who memorizes formula. If you can kind of do the math in your head, like I pay four hundred dollars an acre and I sell it for eight hundred, anybody can do that math. But it's great if what I guess I was saying about school is ideal. If you start guiding people, and there's a great book by Richard Thaler who won a Nobel Prize in economics, speaking of economics, he says, you know, it's called nudge. It's great if you get nudged in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? And when, and I know I'm talking on a different subject now, but the education system in general nudges you in the wrong direction. For example, it forces you to read boring books. And then when people graduate high school or college, they're so burnt out. They've been nudged away from being a book reader, you know? And like you said, you've learned from listening and reading the systems that other people built. And it's very powerful. So anyway, back to, we can talk on that all day, but that's why we're doing this show episode is just so people can learn. Like, here's a practical way that somebody... And you didn't inherit a whole bunch of money to start, right? You just I started took, from scratch. I took my engineering money, started from zero. Just from your now, job. Yeah, now to 10, 10 million. Yeah. Just from my engineer. I was making, I came out of school making 113,000 per year was my yeah. first offer. Then, you know, with bonuses and everything, probably caught 125 to 150 per year. Yeah. So I was making a solid amount, but I started with, you know, student debt, like had to move out, do yeah. this expenses. And then everything on top of that, I just plowed into buying land. Yeah. Now. What are some of the pitfalls? So let's say somebody just goes out and and that's why it's probably good that you took those two courses that you paid for, whatever you paid 2,500 bucks for those two, it kind of can help you from falling in the ditch. What are the biggest pitfalls you've seen when people, what's three pitfalls, mistakes, deadly errors for people trying to do land arbitrage you've seen other people do? 
Well, the first thing is not knowing your area, not becoming an expert. So they spend all this time and energy mailing out their offers are too high or they're way too low. Yes. And you know, they're getting all hate calls and everything back. Is and that what people do if you do I got too low? The worst. People are like, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> I sent one out recently, the envelope, I hand stuffed them to put dollar bills in there. And okay. people got so upset. They were like, why are you sending me a dollar bill? They paid for the postage to mail me the dollar bill back. <laughs> And one guy included the worst hate letter I've ever received. I cannot even come close to mentioning what he said. He wrote it on my offer and sent it back with my dollar bill. So don't (laughs) insult people by sending them a dollar, even if you just meant it to be kind of cool. So you don't do that anymore, right? Yeah, you got to know your area. (laughs) It comes down to you got to know your area. Because if you're lowballing. Texas, man, Texas people, you you be happy they didn't send you a (laughs) bullet back in the envelope, my friend. You get a bullet. (laughs) This is what I'm going to do to you. Yeah, but that that comes from knowing your area because if you get if you offer too much, you're going to be screwed on the buy side. Yes. If you offer too little, you're not going to get any deals. You're just going to get a bunch. Yeah, because if you offer too much, even if you say, "Oh, well, actually," then backtracking from it's, a high offer hard. is tough to do. Yeah. You've benchmarked in their head. You've set the bar so high, they're like, "Ah, oh, I could get three thousand bucks an acre." If you try to be like, "No, no, no," I meant two thousand. They're going to be like, "Forget it." Your letter says that. Yep. And if you go too low, yeah, not you probably get a bad reputation. People start talking to each other like this stupid John guy. If he ever <laughs> writes you a letter, that is very true, actually. Yeah, um, dude. People who own farms, it's, it's not a big city. It's not. It's they know each are other. Small. It's not that many people that live out in some of those counties. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, you that reputation is important. I think the second um thing is outside of knowing your area, you have to. It's funny because I hear you talk about a lot recently not delegating. Yes. And like you can't delegate what you don't know. I see so many people in the land industry and real estate in, de- in general. They're delegating to like VAs. Yeah, yeah. All this stuff. There's like, all this B. Exactly. I I was I saw a post, I think it was yesterday, a couple of days ago. Someone's like, who do you hire for a VA to come up with your offer price on Yes. letters for land i'm like how are you about to hire a va yeah. to come up with your offer that's like a, that's like a heart surgeon design. being like all right what nurse can actually do the heart surgery i'm like well then why are you the heart surgeon if you want to make my listen we talked about this you're in my actual john's in my advanced mentor program people pay and kind of do shadowing program he's been spending time and that's one of the things that i told him is that there is a myth and it's going around on instagram and TikTok because it goes viral because it sounds great just get something, you know, find a good industry and then hand it off and replace yourself. And I'm like, well, do you think Elon Musk can replace himself to build Tesla? The whole reason he's the richest man in the world and somebody changing technology is because he's the guy. And of course, he doesn't necessarily cook his own food or doesn't necessarily do all the accounting for Tesla. But at the core, you're going to have to commit to doing the work yourself. And you use what I always say is, assistants amplify you they don't replace you a great story i have because this is a huge problem in the land business i was trying to buy a piece of land just from another investor and i was like okay i'm gonna buy this and maybe give it away or do whatever it's kind of in the middle of nowhere and so the guy sends me the location i do some further digging and look it up like dude this piece of land is 50 miles from where you told me it actually (laughs) was (laughs) way out in the middle of nowhere in texas he's like oh well that's the map my va gave me and I'm like, so you didn't actually go look up this piece of land that you're trying to this sell. This is one of your students, because you've got like a... Not my students, no, okay. another guy that I'm try, was oh. trying to buy a piece of land from. I would never let my students do this. Okay. So this yeah. guy was just another land investor. I was like, you know, can I buy this piece from you? He sends me the GPS location, and I do some further digging, and it was actually 50 miles from where he said it was. And this dude was trying to sell that piece of land to, to people. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, that's where my VA said it was. I'm like, so you didn't actually go in and figure out where the land was actually located before you bought it. Right. And now you're actually trying to sell it with a wrong location. You're telling me it's here, but it's actually 50 miles away. I was like, you know, you probably, that's a, just a great example of a VA yeah. outsource. I'm like, man, you know, you got someone who's probably not even in the United States trying to figure yeah. out where this land is located and you just don't even double check it. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, yeah, that's, that's not just in the land deal, but you can't delegate what you don't know. Over time, as you become a true expert, you've done 500 deals. It'll be a little easier for you to delegate some things now. For yeah. if you need to do your first five deals on your own, 100% for sure. I'll do everything from ground up and probably more than five, but I'm just saying. So what do you think is a third pitfall you see? Probably not 
knowing how to sell the land. A lot of people- right, so they buy it, but they don't know how to resell it. Yeah, they it. don't have the systems in place or just the knowledge and kind of just the basic marketing and sales knowledge to, to make it happen. And then it takes them a long time to yeah. sell the land or they can't sell it for you know what they thought they could and then that destroys their economics or, you know. They... So in the land, in the John, John, your land arbitrage system, what's the secret that helps you sell faster than people who are beginners or people that are in your training program? Yeah, so I do all the ads and everything myself, basically, or I touch and make sure everything is the way I want it. And we do a lot of Facebook geotargeting. Yep. And Facebook Marketplace. That's where Facebook's perfect. Yes, geotargeting on Facebook and the Facebook Marketplace. Is, yep. I don't know why more people don't use that for all types of real estate. Yes. Like you can actually run an ad on yes. Facebook Marketplace. Like I could post this farm for sale in Virginia, this yep. location on the Facebook Marketplace, then run a Facebook Boost ad on that. Mm -hmm. And everyone around there will see that farm for yes. sale. Everyone uses Facebook. So there's too many people out there just using Zillow or realtor.com or lands of America, which, you know, yeah. you, so you will gotta, get sales, but. But not as you got that velocity. You can, like I said, we, we were doing deals together. And we resold half of it in the first 10 days of owning it. Yeah. And also that's also my email list, right? So I've built up yes. an email list using Facebook forms a lot of times or other yeah. methods and just build that list. Then, you know, I shoot them an email before I even buy it. Like, hey, this piece of land is coming. Yep. You have first dibs, you're on my list. Yeah. That's how I sold two lots like that out of ours just before so as, even close. So as you do this more and more and commit to making money this way, you start building up kind of loyal customers. Yes. Who have done other deals and they kind of like to buy land and they like your system. I like to think of it more as like a brand too. Like yes. it's almost personal brand, but you know, a personal and business land brand. Where yeah. you become like, for me, the te I do a lot in Texas. So like everyone yes. in my area like knows like, hey, you have land, like, do you have land here? Do you have land there? And the, yep. like, I've been able to get people coming to me yes. instead of just passively posting my land and waiting for someone to try and buy it. Yeah. That's interesting. And that's taken, of course, you know, tens of thousands. I think it's in the hundreds of thousands. I was looking, I've spent well over a hundred thousand just in Facebook ads on land alone in the last five years. So the deal we're looking at or that we did, you projected the rate of return IRR to be over 200%, mm -hmm. which is amazing. So that's a deal we did, you know, and you're basically looking over time, you got cash flow, you have profit. There's tax advantages that people, a lot of people don't know and aren't taught of being a real estate owner as well. So some cool things. Of course, you can deduct things like interest. You could deduct the expenses of subdividing and so on and so forth. But yep. um, we're on track to hit that, by the way. I mean, as long as everything keeps going, I mean, we're actually a little bit ahead. Of we're pace. ahead of the plan. Yeah, so a we, bit. you've got a nice, he's got a nice little software system generated a report. You can run your projections out. Of course, like Mike Tyson said, you know, everybody has a plan until I punch him in the face. So projections don't always perfectly line up with reality. In this case, we're doing a little better. Sometimes mm -hmm. projections, Un, are under optimistic and you end up doing better, yeah. which is a great problem to have is when your projections, but of course, as we know in life over time, it averages out, but you really don't want to buy, you need what's called a margin of safety. So your yes. margin of safety is like Warren Buffett's famous saying, you know, the, the mar margin of safety, you want to at least see yourself doubling your money. Yeah. That's like a at minimum. At least a hundred percent yield yeah. is what I like to look at. Yeah. What's the most you've made on a property? Probably the one I'm doing right now. It's a big subdivision and I gave them 250,000 down okay. and 1.25 million over okay. 10 years. So I'm paying them like 14.5 a month, I think. Okay. And all said and done, it's going to be about $5 million of notes receivable. So I've turned gotcha. 250 into you sure, know, 200 because it's a lever for those of you who don't yeah. know. Even though overall he'll have to pay a million bucks, it's leverage over time. He doesn't have to give that all at once. So you're saying two hundred thousand, the leverage it ends up turning into five million. Now you yep. need to subtract Minus the, the interest that you paid in the one point two million, but so you're like talking about making millions. Yeah, you're talking. I'm talking. You know, making three, making four million from two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. That's good. That's game changing for most people. And the cool thing about this system for a lot of people 
you're ambitious, you know, we're starting to do bigger and bigger things together. But a lot of people are like, if I could just make a million dollars once, I'll retire on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, the genius thing about this is that's obviously a bigger deal, but you yeah. could buy a $5,000 piece of land and sell it for 15 or 20 on yep. payments. So we talked about the pitfalls. You know, we talked about your story. One of the things that I think people that follow me want to know is like, how big could this thing get? Because we've, we've run some yeah. projections. You were estimating just for Texas, you think we can do $100 million worth of deals. I think so, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. Of, like I said, the largest portion of the net worth of the world, everybody talks about GDP and everybody talks about how much Apple's worth and how much Amazon's worth a trillion dollars, but I'm going, the most of the wealth, at least, let's say, it's hard to know exactly, 60 to 80% of all global wealth is just literally in this earth, dirt, real yep. estate. And so it's a tragedy that more people don't know this. Whether you Now, by the way, there's different ways people make money. People make money in multifamily. You hear that a lot, apartment buildings or duplexes, triplex, all this, and people make money buying homes. You see it on TV and they renovate and they flip. But people forget like land is a big, that's something that I do. You know, I'm very interested in land from, from the agriculture. I've got farmer's cart, food business and all that. But I'm glad that this word is getting out there because it's like, it's really accessible for almost everybody lives near yeah. a piece of land that if they knew, if they had the know-how, they could acquire it, either improve it and resell it or just sometimes just resell it. Yeah. I mean, the, the opportunity is, is definitely huge. And one thing I love about it is it's very simple. Yes. Also being in Texas, I've done, you know, deals in Arizona or deals, mm -hmm. you know, in Wyoming. Like I've done multiple different states all across the country. So you don't actually have to live near the land in all cases now. So you could do it remotely, but you, you could, do yeah. need to, what we talk about principle number one, the you commandment, gotta, yeah. you got to commit to know that place. Yes. So you can't just pop in and be like, yo, I live in Florida, but you know what? I'm visiting, uh, you know, Ann Arbor, Michigan today. Let me buy a quick piece of land. But at today's day and age, you can live in Florida and study the crap out of yes. Ann Arbor, Michigan, and you can become an expert from Florida and buy a piece yes. up there. You know, I wouldn't recommend buying a large piece without seeing it, but you know, yeah. a smaller piece for sure. And I don't mean, make it your first deal. Your first yeah. deal wants, needs to be in an area. No, I agree. I like you to know. tell people, try and start near you. That yes. way you can go out and see the land. You can get yes. the pictures. You can get boots on ground. But, you know, that's still a wide radius. You can drive three, four hours. Yes. You know, so there's so much land and opportunity. And the cool thing is this works not just in the United States. There's True. basically every country in the world, for the most part, allows, you know, you can sell land and owner finance it or seller finance it. Like, there's also other benefit because you can buy a piece of land and keep a piece for yourself. Because some people aren't going to do as many, you know, 500 deals. But you could use this technique. Let's say you want to own a piece of land because maybe you've always wanted to put a house on it or have a little place to keep some chickens or a farm or a place to take your kids and family. You can use this technique if you do it right and get a, effectively a piece of land for free. You probably make yourself. money. You probably yeah. get a piece of you land. You get and paid make money. to have your own piece of land. So yeah. if you've ever dreamed about owning real estate, owning a piece of land, owning something in the countryside, and by the way, you can do this in the middle of the city too. Um, this is a cool system for people. Yeah, it is. There is so much opportunity. You can use land for just about anything in a lot of these different areas too. There he is. Livestock, animals. Siggy. Mobile homes. What's up, bud? <laughs> Siggy, do you want to buy some land? If it had bones on it, he'll be he happy. He wants some land. He's going to value, he's going to pay in bones. He, he digs up like dead chicken <laughs> bones and he digs up deer deer antlers he values land by the amount of bones per acre 500 <laughs> bones per acre um so if people want to learn more um i'm gonna put a link below john and i you know are doing actual deals together but as i got to know john he came through my mentor program i was like we need to build this and really get the word out. So I'm gonna put a link below. You can go watch here um, and see if you qualify to be a student of John's. I'm doing it with them. We're building out 
kind of a system. I've been doing this and John has what you need. What I like about John too is he's an engineer. So like engineers like <laughs> build out how many videos is it I'm, so far? It's a lot. I'm very detail oriented, yes. obviously. And there's a lot of real estate and land courses out there, obviously. I mean, I would like to think and that mine is the best, but yes. I the humbly think it is because it's just, it covers everything and the details of everything. It's not and just it's some, got templates and it's got yeah, like it's everything. Not, like, so you could go out, we, you know, there's a lot of information given in this, you can go out and search YouTube. And some people just are like, I'm never paying for education, but I'm going to tell you this, I've said this before people think, Oh, it's self-serving that I'm just saying it because I sell courses. No, it's it. The reason I got into selling courses because courses changed my life. Same here. That's how Same I with you. So sometimes people are like, Oh, you're just saying that because you sell courses. I'm like, no, I got into courses. I have, you know, I've made money in many different things. The reason I still do courses, it's not the main, it's, it's a small part of my business revenue. Um, but I do it because it's transformative. And even when haters, you know, the few haters that say, oh, this is a scam, you and I both get crazy amount of testimonials of people are like, this yeah. changed our life. I, I did my 67 steps course anywhere I go in the world. That's from 2014. Literally, I can go any city and people will be like, 2014, that changed my life. And this real estate. I have numerous students who have built already six figure businesses just buying yes. and selling land in their first year. Yeah. And it's like, this is not some overview. Like I'm actually showing people how to create Facebook ads, you know, how, how to, to become an expert letter is how important. to do the letters, how to letter. value the property. If you don't know how to value the property, you can know everything else. Mm -hmm. Then it'll be a disaster. So, so good. We're going to put a link, go watch, go read this page, go see the presentation, see if it's good for you to apply. Um, you know, I wanted to do this free one, I'm not trying to sell you something, but there's always 20% of people who are like, okay, I need 20 hours of this training and I'm not going to do a 20 hour podcast. I uh, like you, but I'm not going to sit in my barn for 20 hours. How many hours yeah. is it so far? The training, uh, 20 plus. Yeah. And so, my, my goal is to keep adding as I do yeah. cool stuff or cool. Deals and I'm recording stuff in there on the negotiation. I negotiate big deals. You know, I'm actually training John in some bigger stuff because he wants to keep expanding. So, you know, go there, grab the course. Also, if you're listening, you can just go to tylopez.com slash land podcast tylopez.com slash land podcast l-a-n-d podcast p-o-d-c-a-s-t i'm gonna have a special page up for those of you watching this on youtube or spot or listening on spotify podcast wherever you're watching this facebook go to tylopez.com slash podcast see about applying to be uh, trained directly under John. He's done 500 deals. That's pretty insane by age 29. I've done deal with him. So I actually know that this is legit in the sense that we own a piece, we own uh, land together. So I always like to vet deals. He's been through my mentorship program as well. So, uh, and you're also an investor in some of the deals that yep. we have. So, Absolutely. So, so he's put his money where his mouth is. Go to tylopez.com slash land podcast and see if you should get those 20 hours of training. If not, listen to this again. There's a lot here. There's enough to get you started. There's enough here to make you dangerous. <laughs> There's a lot of, I, I tell people, the only thing bad about podcasts is like you can't record a podcast long enough unless you want to set a world record for like a 20 hour podcast. Um, you can't do a podcast long enough to really give you everything you need, but podcasts, YouTubes, Facebooks, Instagram stories. These are powerful to just nudge you in the right direction. And whether you want to get in John's land arbitrage, you know, system course, or if you want to go piece it together on your own, take some action this year. I always say, I think the minimum is you should have 20% of your net worth in real estate. I don't, I like, I love crypto. NFTs, I buy big companies, I love e-commerce, social media brand, all that. No matter what, I look at my portfolio twice a year of just like where my net worth is. And I want to, and I want I'm always looking to at least be at 20%. Why? Because like Mark Twain, Twain said, buy land, they ain't making more of it. Nope. They can make more crypto. They're staking, there's they make more NFTs out of nowhere. They say you can't make more Bitcoin. Okay, 21 million, but they can make other competitors, which dilute, but 
land, unless you go to Mars, which I'm not that excited about. The Earth is not getting bigger. They're not in land. If anything, it's shrinking. Water levels are rising. So that'll actually make land more valuable. And um, it's a skill you should know yourself. You can pass it on to your kids. You can know that if you learn real estate, it's a gar- It's not a fad. It's not a fad. You look back, Julius Caesar, Egyptian pharaohs. What did they? They were in the real estate business. <laughs> Moses. They it's were all the in the real estate business. So you want whether you're doing something else and you're just going to do this part time. You need to be a little bit in the real estate business. You owe it to yourself. Start with something simple. Take note of what John said. Like here, I've got over, it's almost 500 acres. I pieced together different land, negotiated deals, just like what John does. Don't start with 450 acres. These are, these are multi-million dollar deals. Start with as small as you can. One of the 67 steps, my mentor, Joel Salatin, he's like, make your mistakes small. And yeah. he called it in the back 40, in the back part of the farm where nobody could make fun of you. So don't bet your whole net worth on this. Um, but buy, own something. By the end of this year, try to own something. In the next 12 months, you own a piece of real estate. In addition, by the way, to your own residence. Your own residence is good, but that's not a business. You know, lots of people. So own another place. You know, look at your net worth. If you're doing crypto, if you're doing e com, be like, wait a sec, I'm too heavily. All good asset managers know you got to look at your portfolio and not get the weighting wrong. So you can misweight what you have. So yeah, more about John, John's system, John's training, super detailed. If you want it just laid out for you, tylopez.com slash land podcast. Put a link here or just type that in and uh, I'll have a link on Ty Lopez too, but this will take you directly there. My man. Thank you so much for around. doing Let's this. Let's go see. Let's, see Let's little, go explore I got some, some pigs down below. Everything is about springtime, so they're going to come out into this, into the... Uh, Sweet. I keep everything outside, but they like to be in the barn sometime in the winter. The horses are all out. I have about... How many houses do I have? I have a couple farms. Two, four, six, eight. We have 11 here. I have about 30 horses. Got the other 20 somewhere on the other farm. Yeah, one of them came right up to me. I was yeah. petting it. A lot of those horses I raised from a baby. They're big. They're 2,000-pound Belgians. That's a baby, by the way. She's only two years old. People are worried about weight problems. I'm like, that horse, Katrina, weighs 2,000 pounds at age two. <laughs> she doesn't worry about her weight. Makes her stronger. Need a little weight around the farm to move stuff around. You don't want to be too skinny. I don't know if you want to put on 2,000 pounds, Rick. Probably won't fit your frame too well. You have to sell all your clothes. Pounds of muscle. <laughs> Rick says you could have a thousand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a. You know what I'm gonna do for a viral video? What? I'm gonna hitch up some of my horses, and I'm gonna see how many men does it take to pull against these. Even two of my horses is gonna take a long. They have four legs. They can stick them in the ground. Get they, Rome to do it. <laughs> Rome weighs 330 pounds. These weigh some of these weigh 2,300 pounds. My theory, how, what's your theory? How many things is it going to be? I think you're going to need about 20 to 30 per horse. Yeah. I think 10. 10 oh, strong man, guys. you have it. No way. <laughs> Let's, can we bet a piece of land on that? <laughs> Let's bet a piece of land. Is it friend. 10 roams or like 10, 10 roams, or 10 me? No way. <laughs> Remember, humans have a disadvantage, two things. One, like one grip strength, right? You can't transfer all your strength in. Number two, we only have two legs. So you put your feet down. Those uh, those horses have big feet like that. We shoe them. <laughs> they put they put those eight legs down. Imagine if they weren't even trying. If you had to pull them, forty six hundred pounds video. of weight, dead weight to pull around. I think it'll take about thirty to forty guys to keep up with them. And yeah, Stonehenge I went to in the UK. And I think so, they had, I, my theory, my conspiracy theory is they had elephants. That's what I think. Because oh. elephant, before you had cranes, you had elephants. Now, I don't know the only mm-hmm. counter argument. I'm not sure an elephant trunk. Some of those rocks weigh 20 tons. So you'd have to have elephants that you could, you know, train and you'd put a rope around it and put like four elephants, grab it. And I think, 
Animals are smart, man. You could train them. You, Elephants you and police or aliens. We never know. Yeah, aliens. <laughs> aliens, yeah. Well, if the aliens come, you still want to own land. This is true. I'm going to bring everything back to land for this episode. <laughs> All right, we'll go walk around. All right. All right.